Now we're going to talk about the major histocompatibility complex, which is the name for the um, region of DNA that contains the genes that code for these molecules that present antigens. So we've been referring to these molecules as MHC class 1, MHC class 2. MHC stands for major histocompatibility complex. And I'm going to tell you that um, the next couple of videos that talk about MHC 1 and 2, the genes that code for them, it's a little confusing. Actually, it's a lot confusing. Um, so we're going to go into detail. Your book talks about this as well. Um, but you're going to have to have a lot of patience uh, when trying to understand MHC diversity. So MHC, major, histo major histocompatibility complex. Um, the term histocompatibility refers to the fact that these uh, proteins on the surface of cells that present antigen are the proteins that need to be matched during tissue transplantation. So when we talk about histocompatibility, we're talking about tissue transplants. Um, and that topic will be covered in the last unit of this course. But when somebody wants to donate an organ to someone else, what you got to do is you got to type those tissues and you're typing MHC molecules because the immune system uh, recognizes or attacks cells based on these molecules. We're going to get into tissue transplantation later in the course. Right now, we're just talking about the normal function of, of MHC in antigen presentation to T cells. So MHC, um, major histopathic compatibility complex. So we've been talking a lot about MHC1 and MHC2 molecules. And this is going to focus just on MHC1. The genes that encode for the proteins in MHC1 are found on chromosome 6. So you have two copies of chromosome 6, one, six, one maternal and one paternal. So that's straightforward. So when we talk about MHC class 1 molecules, and I've drawn one there, so it's made of two proteins, the alpha protein and the beta 2 microglobulin protein. And the alpha protein is what binds the uh, peptide and presents it to T cells. So we've gone over that in previous videos. So now um, we're going to identify, we're, we're going to add in layers of complexity, because of course everything is more complex than it should be. So first we're going to introduce the concept of the fact that MHC molecules have alternative names. So you'll sometimes see the term HLA class 1, which is the same thing as MHC class 1. So HLA is just another term for the MHC molecule. HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen. Again, that name comes from the fact that years ago, it was uh, identified that leukocytes have these proteins on their surface, which seem to be really important. And now we know the HLAs, in fact, are the MHCs. So these names are used interchangeably. Uh, so if you see MHC class one molecules, the same thing as HLA class one molecules. Depending on the source of the literature you might be reading, it might use one or the other. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. Second, let's talk about the genes that encode for the HLA um, alpha chain, or the MHC class one alpha chain. It's the protein that holds the peptide. So where do proteins come from? Well, they you must have genes that have the information to code for proteins. So we're interested in the concept now that the gene that encodes for MHC class one there's a gene called HLA-A. That's a gene, it's found on chromosome six. You have two copies of chromosome six. So you have two copies of the HLA-A gene. And the HLA-A gene, uh, it has the genetic information to code for the alpha chain of MHC class one molecules. So it's a start codon, stop codon, encodes the protein, and that's the protein. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so there's the alpha chain, there's the beta 2 microglobulin. So now we've got to talk about the fact that the HLA-A genes have multiple alleles. If you'll recall from your knowledge of genetics, alleles are versions of a gene. So you could have one gene with two alleles, and four alleles, 10 alleles, right? These are different possible versions that could be inherited by a person. Now, we only have two copies of the HLA-A gene, right? The maternal copy and the paternal copy. So you only inherit two copies of the HLA-A gene, but how many possible copies are out there in the human population? That's what we talk about when we talk about the possible alleles um, of HLA-A. In the human population, how many have been identified? And we're going to see shortly 
many. So alleles refer to the version of the genes uh, that you inherited. So alleles refers to genes. We're going to use another term called allotype, which refers to the proteins. So if you've inherited this allele and that allele, then you make this allotype of the protein and that allotype of the protein. So allotype is not analogous to alleles. Allotype refers to the protein version that you make. Okay, so how many alleles are there for the HLA-A gene? It turns out there are over 1,900 versions of this gene in the human population that have been identified to date. That's a lot of versions. So again, you only inherit it too. You inherit maternal and paternal. But out of the how many possible versions or alleles are there? Over 1,900. Why are there so many different versions? We're going to get to that shortly. So let's say one, and they're naming, the naming of the version is a little weird, but we're going to go through the naming because we're going to work with some of these alleles later when we read some papers. Um, here's a version of the HLAA gene called 0201. They've got really funny numbered names. So if you inherited version 0201 on one of your chromosomes, then the genetic information will code for a protein that makes a MHC class 1 molecule or an HLA class 1 molecule, whatever you want to call it. And so we're going to give that allotype a name. So that is HLA-A with a star 0201. Okay, so that allele made that allotype of the protein. If, on the other hand, your other allele, let's say you inherited on your other chromosome, version uh, 3001, that version is going to code for, it's going to code for another H, uh, HLA class 1 or MHC class 1 alpha chain protein, but that protein is a little different. It's, al it's the allotype 3001. So you have this protein, this MHC class 1 alpha chain protein, but you have two different versions of the protein. And these versions actually are different and important why that they're different. So we're going to get into that in the next um, slide. So what are these different versions? Why do we have these different versions? So we have to talk about the um, structure of the MHC alpha chain first. So if you recall the, uh, the MHC class 1 molecule, you've got this little beta 2 microglobulin, which is invariant. It doesn't change. It doesn't, there are lots, you don't have lots of different versions of that. But this alpha chain protein, there are lots of different versions, lots of different allotypes and alleles. Why? So it comes down to talking about the peptide binding groove um, of the MHC alpha chain. So if you recall that peptides fit into here. So these molecules bind to peptides and present the peptides to T cells. Which peptides fit in here? Do all peptides fit in here? And the answer is no, absolutely not. It's actually very specific peptides that fit in here. So, first of all, MHC class 1 molecules typically load peptides, bind peptides, that range from 8 to 10 amino acids long. The average is 9, so we talk about a 9-mer or a non-mer fitting into this. So, if it's, uh, it's 8 to 10 amino acids long, does every um, short peptide fit in here? The answer is no. Uh, let's look at a peptide here. So let's say this um, MHC molecule is going to try to bind and load this peptide. So I've drawn a peptide out with two, four, six, eight, nine amino acids, a typical uh, peptide that can be loaded onto MHC class 1 molecules. So MHC class 1 alpha chain, right, it's made of, it's a protein, it's made of amino acids. And the information for these amino acids comes from the gene or the allotype of the, of, or the allele um, of the MHC class 1. So let's say this is allotype uh, A0201. So it comes from the A0201 allele. So it has a certain amino acid sequence, a certain three-dimensional structure, and it has amino acids that hold peptides in its peptide binding groove. Does it hold every peptide? No, it doesn't. It only holds peptides that interact with its amino acids um, with very specific amino acids in the peptide. 
So now we need to introduce this concept, uh, concept of anchor residues. So when MHC class one molecules uh, try to bind peptides, they typically interact with two specific amino acids um, in their uh, chain. So we've got a nine amino acid peptide here, and amino acids two and nine are t the typical location of anchor residues. So what does that mean? Let's visualize it. So when uh, this peptide tries to get loaded into this um, MHC class one molecule, the uh, L and the V, the leucine and the valine, let's say that this allotype binds peptides with a leucine and a valine as anchor residues. So this peptide will fit in there. So it will um, load onto this molecule and this MHC class one will says, yep, I'll hold onto this peptide and I'll show it to T cells. So this uh, MHC one molecule can bind any peptide with these anchor residues. So we talk about a peptide binding motif. Any peptide that is nine amino acids long, that has a leucine at position two and a valine at position nine, that protein, that peptide can be presented on this specific um, allotype. So uh, MHG molecules have what we call a promiscuous binding site. They can bind many different peptides, but they bind peptides with specific anchor residues. If there was a peptide that came along that had a serine at position two, this um, MHC molecule would not bind it. If there was a phenylalanine at position two, this uh, MHC wouldn't bind it. But if there was a leucine at position two and a valine at position nine, those amino acids interact with the amino acids in the MHC class one alpha chain such that it will bind to it and it will hold on to that peptide and it will present that peptide to T cells. So what we've introduced is this concept of a peptide binding motif. Each MHC molecule, which comes from the HLA genes, like HLA-A, each one of them has a peptide binding motif. So they will only bind and present specific peptides. So this is the first introduction to the concept that you have different MHC1 molecules with different peptide binding motifs, which allow you to present different peptides. So we've, we'll, I'll uh, stop here and we'll go on to some other videos that continues talking about the different versions of MHEs and the different versions of HLAs.